Today on Network Africa. Ivory Coast former First Lady Simone Gbagbo appears in court for her crimes against humanity trial. Then today is no tobacco day. The World Health Organization says plain packaging will help reduce attractiveness to tobacco products. Plus, as Angola's economy struggles, small business owners feel they could lose it all. Network Africa begins right now. Welcome everyone, I am BC Adebayo. Let's begin in Ivory Coast, where the wife of the country's former leader, Lorme Gbagbo Simone, is facing trial for war crimes and crimes, crimes against humanity at a court in the country. Many of her supporters were in court today, cheering her on. As she arrived, she smiled and waved to them. The accusations against her stem back to her alleged role in the 2011 civil war. Her husband is already before the International Criminal Court on charges linked to the brief conflict sparked by his refusal to accept defeat to Alassane Ouattara in the presidential runoff in 2010. The prosecution alleges she was part of an inner circle of her husband's key backers that planned violence against Ouattara supporters as a means of maintaining Gbagbo in power. The trial opens just a day after Chad's president, Hissin Habri, was convicted by a special tribunal in Senegal for ordering the killing and torture of thousands of political opponents during his eight-year rule. Well, the success of that trial is likely to bolster African leaders who have grown increasingly hostile towards the ICC and have called for the continent to take justice into its own hands. Well, the former first lady has had quite a life. She is considered a politician back home and before her arrest was president of the parliamentary group of the Ivorian Popular Front, as well as being the vice president of the FBI. Well, she is considered a controversial figure in the country. In September 2008, she engaged in a two-week tour of the central part of the country, concluding the tour on the 14th of the same month. She rallied support for her husband's candidacy in the forthcoming election during his tour and asked participation in the voter identification process. In the 2010 to 2011 Ivorian crisis, Norok Bagwo and Alassane Ouattara disputed the results of the 2010 presidential election. The crisis ended with the arrest of Laura and Simone Bagwo by pro Ouattara forces on the 11th of April in 2011. Simone Igbago was subsequently held under house arrest. On the 22nd of November 2012, a warrant was unsealed by the International Criminal Court for Simone's arrest for crimes against humanity. The court alleged that as a member of her husband's inner circle, she played a central role in post-election violence. Amnesty International called on the Ivorian government to immediately transfer her to the custody of the court. The government refused to do so and Bagwo was judged by an Ivorian, Ivorian court on the 10th of March 2015. She was sentenced to 20 years in jail for crimes against humanity. Well, the former ICC prosecutor, Charles Adeogun Philip, joins us now on the program. Thank you for joining us, Charles. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're quite pleased with Simone being in court today. What does this mean for Africa? Well, it's, it's a significant and important precedent uh, in holding high-profile human rights abusers to account for their crimes on the continent. It is indeed a, a, a victory for the victims of, of, of the post-election violence in Cote d'Ivoire in, in 2011. So I, I'm satisfied with this result. So we can call it a lesson indeed, but is it a lesson uh, other African leaders may have learned? Well, it is an example that has been set, just as uh, the case with the Hussein Habri trial in Senegal, that um, 
African leaders who are implicated in human rights, gross human rights abuses, will not go scot-free. Um, it is an important example that we are also capable of finding African solutions to African problems, and it's a step in the right direction in demonstrating that uh, the judicial system on our, con on our continent is capable of, of rendering justice. So it, it's, it's a win-win on, on all fronts, in my opinion. And would you encourage that we have more courts like this? And do you see them springing up in future? I think the example has been set. And the example uh, is that we can take advantage of the complementarity principle in the Rome Statute of the ICC to actually um, prosecute violations of international humanitarian law in local jurisdictions. Uh, as you've rightly pointed out, the Hussein Habri uh, Extraordinary Chambers in Senegal is a case in point, and that was uh, a collaboration between the African Union and the government of Senegal. So what you see there is clearly that African leaders and the AU are not opposed to African leaders uh, being held accountable. I think the objection to the ICC was in relation to trying sitting African leaders as opposed to a blanket objection to the trial of African leaders. So this is a step in the right direction, and um, I'm very encouraged by it. Thank you so much, Charles, for joining us. When we come back after the break, today is World No Tobacco Day. With a warning from the WHO and statistical figures, you might want to reconsider that next drag. Do stay with us.